a video demonstration of the Denton vacuum integrity 14. It's a two source uh, thermal evaporation system. Uh, I guess the first thing I want to talk about is the uh, is your uh, gauge controller for your vacuum system. Now this is a cryo system. It's using a uh, air cooled PCI cryogenic compressor. Compressor is powered through the back of the uh, unit here. There's a plug for that, the 208 plug. You also have a plug here, it's a 208 for the uh, mechanical vacuum pump. And you'll need to hook up your uh, cold head here and your two uh, chiller lines, trial lines coming in to mark supply and return. And then on the other side here, there's your power in. Return supply. And then this is for your cold head. Your power to the system is a four wire. I'm using eight gauge. It's 208 single phase with a neutral and a ground. So that's your four wire. Uh, while we're back here, you can see here's your trial pump. Uh, here's one of the uh, high current sources. There's another one up front. And then there's a, uh, a PLC back in here that runs the auto, uh, auto vacuum and auto vent. Demonstrate that for This only has one pulse uh, cathode gauge here. It's an I a variant IMG 100. It's required for that uh, vacuum uh, controller up front there. Uh, you can put another one in here. It's labeled IG2, but uh, it's flanked off right now. This is on the other side of the, uh, the high vac valve. So this uh, IMG 100 pulse cathode gauge tube is reading your chamber vacuum. Uh, there's also a couple of TCs down in here. I just want to point out one thing here too. There's a, uh, there's a valve here. I have it disconnected. And what this does is it allows you to vent the four line or the roughing line while you're venting. It'll turn on while you're venting your uh, cry up during a regeneration. For now, I just have that unplugged. You do have a uh, nitrogen inline used to both vent the chamber It'll also purge your uh, four line during uh, regeneration, and it'll also purge your trial pump. I'll show you how to uh, turn that on. And uh, finally, you have uh, compressed air, 60 psi. There's a pneumatic manifold up here. Uh, operates a couple of the valves here, so you need at least 60 psi, anywhere from 60 to 80 on your air in. That's compressed air, uh, CDA, clean dry air. And uh, finally, you got an in and out for your water. I got a house chiller hooked up. Uh, you don't need very much water through here. Uh, we're only flowing about, uh, actually, I have a lot. We're flowing about three gallons per hour through your uh, crystal monitor to keep that cool. And it's also used to cool the two uh, source uh, feed loops. through over here and then there's a cooling line going up, up over here to the other store. And it's just to keep uh, cool the feet here. Alright, talking about the uh, regeneration, if you want to uh, go ahead and do a regen on the cryo. Oh, you can look down here, you can see the vapor bulb. You see that the cryo is at temperature, around 15 Kelvin. And while we're here, you have your this on-off switch to protect it. What you would do is you shut your cryo down and then go ahead and open it. Uh, make sure your high vac's closed. Shut the cryo off by turning off your high vac pump. Switch to off, like so. And then go ahead and you can vent it. You also have a four line vent here, so if you shut, ever shut your mechanical pump down, you want to vent the four line, you'll go ahead and open this up. Your mechanical pump on off switch, right next to your high vac on off switch. High back pump on all switch. Uh, system controls here, you can turn it off, turn it on. I'm going to switch this to manual, manual just to demonstrate quickly. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to show you, it's interlocked, so if you go ahead and you open and pull this panel down, I'll have two screws in here. 
pull the panel down, you'll see that everything shuts down. At this point, you want to go ahead and turn it back on. You see all the power comes on to your controller. Power it up. If you ever want to shut it off, you can go ahead and shut it off here. In manual, you can operate any, any of your valves, rough, regen, high vacuum vent. You can do an auto pump down. At this point, the PLC will take control. It'll pump down to a crossover point that's set in your uh, temp, uh, your vacuum controller here. And if this is way past that, it'll automatically switch over to high vac. So uh, I'll go through that procedure later. I'll do a vent and an auto pump. Here's the schematic of uh, go, let's let's go left and right, uh, left and right for your filament, uh, for your uh, sources, evaporation sources. You can select either left or right, and if you want to enable it, you'll want to go ahead and make sure you keep this on filament all the time. There is no flow select. That's an option that's not installed. So, in order to do your left, you go ahead and hit the on button. So now we're all set up. We're under high vacuum. We have our filament uh, power on. We're selecting the left channel, and uh, you do have a rotational force here. See it'll spin the uh, the flat flatter if you try to the block has had sense to do that already. This is enabled. This will do nothing. The power so the current going to the uh, the source is controlled by your deposition controller. I have a power fail here every time I shut it off. Go ahead and hit reset. This is a little schematic of your, uh, your chamber with rotation, your rough valve, vent valve, mechanical pump. TC2 is here. You have a regen valve, purge valve, your cryo pump. TC1 monitors your uh, chamber rough vacuum, and IG1 will turn on automatically. I'll demonstrate that uh, to read your high vacuum. Chamber. IG2 doesn't exist, you can install one, but right now it's not installed. And you do have a uh, TC3 which monitors your rough out of your uh, cryo door regeneration. Uh, so we're all set up right now. You can see, uh, oh, here, here's some of your, uh, here's IG1, uh, uh, TC1, TC2 and 3, so they're all operational. What I normally like to do is just move it over to here, get larger. So this is just showing you the vacuum inside the chamber. Of course your rough vacuum is buried at 1.0 times center minus 4. It doesn't read any lower. And your ionization gauge is reading the high back at 1.5 times center minus 7. Alright, so we're all set up to go. I don't have anything on the... Uh, I have sources in there. We're going to send you a couple extra uh, boats here. So this is what's in there right now. We got one on both sides. I'll open this chamber up and show you what it looks like. But I just want to demonstrate the uh, current going to each one of the sources. Right now, again, we're selecting left. The power is on. At this point, I'll go ahead and hit reset man power. And you can see we're at manual power. At this point here, I can go ahead and start increasing power by using the up arrow here. So you can see the percent power is going up. And if you look down here you can see the current somewhere around 150. Motor gets too low. Keep increasing it to around 20 percent. Power. You go ahead in there. You can you can see that it's glowing. Oh, we do have a uh, shutter switch down here too. I'm going to go ahead and open that. You can see that it's glowing. I mean, there's, there's no metal on it. You go. Know, 
Here's your uh, shutter open and close switch down here. And you do have a manual auto select, so if you're going to run this manually, you want to keep it manual. If you're going to go ahead and let the program run the power and, and, and use your uh, crystal monitor as a feedback source to tell you how fast you're depositing, it'll open the shutter during the, whenever the program of the uh, deposition controller asks you to, and, and at that point you want to be in auto mode. So I'm going to demonstrate that uh, later on when I actually do that uh, deposition. But for now, just keep this shutter in manual. It gives you control of this. You're open and close. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bring this power down. And what we'll do is we'll light up the uh, source number 2 or the right control. In order to do that, typically you'll shut this off. Switch to your right, enable the power to your right source. Now I'm going to go through the same process here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start ramping up the uh, power. thing to do is once you're done uh, doing your deposition, you'll want to go ahead and shut your rotation off, shut the power off, and go, we'll go ahead and do an auto vent. Close the high back valve and open the back valve automatically. Gate one shuts off, and then your TC1 is monitoring the, uh, the pressure inside the uh, chamber. Oh, I don't have nitrogen hooked up, so it's going to take a little bit longer. We're just hooked up, it's just uh, pulling into the open port, pulling the atmosphere in to vent the chamber. Go back to the filament current. The sources are able to put up to close to 500 amps. Again, that's through a boat this size that I showed you. left and your right source set up that way. And the shutter has an opening here so that you could, uh, before opening it, you, you can monitor uh, the deposition rate using a crystal monitor here. And just close it up. Go ahead and close it. Switch over to auto pump. Okay, we're down. I believe 
have the crossover set to uh, 150 millitor. So what will happen is it'll it'll shut the uh, roughing valve off at about 150 millitor. Slight delay in the ionization gate. Open the high back valve in the ionization gate. So what we'll do next after this is we'll demonstrate a, an actual deposition of one of the sources using aluminum. And we'll set up a program with a ramp, ramp and fill up, ramp fill up, and then we'll pause it at five inches. See that the shutter will automatically open up and then you can put in the set point out now, the thickness set point and it'll shut down like that. We'll go through that next, but uh, let's just verify that the auto vent, the auto pump down is working. Proximity switch here and tell you whether or not the door is open. Just to uh, point that out. Alright, we're at uh, 400 millitor now. I just want to show you the crossover and how that the uh, auto pump will switch over to high back, turn your ionization gauge on, or your uh, full by G1. It's actually called cathode gauge on your G100. Now we're going to go What a lot of people do is it, you know, here comes the lamp. It may have been 100 millibars. You guys can see the roughing valve close, high back will open. back open and it'll turn on your uh, high back here. Alright so what a lot of people do is they'll leave it under vacuum like this until their next deposition. Alright so we'll come back later I'm going to do an actual aluminum deposit using the uh, Instacon XCC2. Alright, so what I did is I put a uh, aluminum pellet on the boat, pre-melted it manually, and uh, we just want to make sure we're using the left source. The filament power is on. We're at low vacuum right now. I put a program in. Uh, it's going to do one angstrom a second up to 50 uh, angstrom. So we'll go ahead and just uh, look at ready, we'll hit start. You see the power is increasing. So what I put in was a 10 second rise, the rise, uh, rise time one, 10 seconds or so, just to warm it up. Rise two, we're going to rise up to 27 percent. Now we're at sub 2 for 10 seconds. At this point you want to watch the shutter open. We'll connect the monitor here. 
About 30% power, gonna bring it up to one. And now it's control, trying to control that one anchor in the second. And we're gonna do a total of 15 k well, 50 anchors. This is just a, a quick demo to demonstrate that the uh, XTC2 is working properly, controlling the source. And then we'll see that the shutter flows. Alright, we're up again. It's going to close the shutter now. And the power dropped down to zero. That's with your shutter in auto mode. 